What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Hook Shots Podcast. And as it is the eve of Halloween, arguably the most badass of all holidays, this, my friends, is the Spooktacular Fishing Stories Special. And I know some of you guys uh, were prepped on this and excited about it because we sort of advertised it on our Facebook page the last couple weeks. We actually asked our fans to submit their stories of the unexplained, demonic possession, Bigfoot, alien encounters while fishing for consideration on this very episode. You know, it's kind of like the power of hook shots compels you to tell us the whacked out shit that's happened to you. And, you know, if I'm being honest, we did not get a huge ton of stories, which I really didn't expect to, because, you know, the reality is that not that many people really, you know, have stories like that to share. It's a fairly rare thing, but we got just enough where we gleaned a couple good ones. Okay, so we've got some some fan stories coming your way, along with some stories from uh, some 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 dear friends of the program, okay, including but not limited to uh, Eric Kerber, Kerbs, and uh, Zach the Hammer Miller will be joining us for a segment today, so you can be excited about that, rest assured. So why are we doing this? Well, I mean, if you think about fishing, right, you, you, you put yourself in, in a lot of places, in a lot of situations where weird stuff can happen, right? We're out in the middle of the woods. We're surf fishing at 2 o'clock in the morning on a beach that nobody else is on but you. We are out in the fog. We are over distant peaks and ridges looking for trouts that nobody else is targeting. And therefore, by default, you put yourself in places where the paranormal and unexplained can happen. Now, sadly, though, right? or maybe not sadly, now that I think about it, part of the reason why I had to put out the call to you guys uh, is because I I really don't have a story of my own to share. I don't. I'm, a, I'm, I'm the biggest lame ass in this whole thing. Uh, I've, I've just not really encountered anything uh, that I could not explain while I've been out fishing or ever for that matter, you know, and the funny thing about that is when I was a kid, like in high school and even like early college, I was that stereotypical, like, let's go crawl around in some abandoned mansion, you know, like there's a magazine called Weird New Jersey, okay, that Jersey people are very uh, familiar with, and that's their milieu, that's what they do, it's all just about weird stuff people find in the woods, and you know, us exploring the Marlboro Slaughterhouse and all that stuff. And I, I was kind of into that for a time. But even doing those things, never once, like, did anything happen where we were like, holy shit, that was a ghost or something. So, uh, you know, I'm a weenie. I'm lame in all this. Luckily, we have our, our friends and fans to get us through and scare us, hopefully, a little bit. So I feel the need before we we get going, because I do want to get into these stories pretty quickly here, to at least clarify, okay, my beliefs. All right, so here we go. Ghosts. I'm not a huge believer in ghosts, okay? Uh, Do I believe that those who have gone to the other side before us can remind us that they're here? Sure, I do. I do, and I think everybody at some point has experienced that where you, you know, you see a, I don't know, uh, something out of place in a random place, a sign, uh, something laying on the ground, a trinket or something that, you know, just makes you go in your head like, oh man, like that's, that's Aunt Florence. Like she's here. She's, she's watching over us. I I do believe in, in little things like that. But again, because I've never experienced anything that I would call a ghost Sighting, I don't know. I'm not completely sold on ghosts, okay? Um, All these shows on TV, okay, these ghost hunting shows that are real popular, can't watch them. Can't watch them. In fact, they make me cringe because why didn't I think of that 10 years ago? You just crawl around in some weird place with black light cameras and make a whole bunch of money and don't actually have to produce anything, okay? Now... To further that, 
the only thing that I hate more than these ghost hunting shows for that very reason is finding Bigfoot. Okay. I do not believe there's no Bigfoot. Sorry. Sorry. We have Bigfoot stories included in this, but I don't care. There's no Bigfoot. Okay. If there is a Bigfoot, which I really don't think, he's in Siberia or the Himalayas or somewhere where nobody else is. I I am not buying that there are Bigfoots or skunk apes or whatever in the United States of America. There are too many people here. One would have been found dead somewhere. Okay, no, sorry, I no, no Bigfoot. But the show Finding Bigfoot irks me so much. It it makes my blood boil. Like what a concept. Where was I fifteen years ago? You round up a group of people. You get to travel the country, go to cool different places, okay? Uh, You don't ever have to produce a Bigfoot, and you're never going to. And I don't care what Bobo and the crew say. This It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm on this side of the mountain. Bullshit. Okay, you're all 15 feet from the car, and you're done filming your knocking and howling and rock throwing in enough time to get to the Red Lobster before they close, okay? And you're drinking a beer at the hotel bar by 10 o'clock. Uh, but I digress. Anyway, Bigfoots, no. Now, aliens, yep. I, y- yep, like, you give me a large pepperoni pizza, four-liter Mountain Dew, and an Ancient Aliens marathon, and I'm a happy man. Everything that Giorgio Sukalos, you know, the crazy dude with the spiky, weird hair, says... I take as absolute truth. Everything on ancient aliens, I believe. I believe aliens built the pyramids and built the Mayan temples, and they were here billions of years ago, and they're here now, and the government knows it. We might even actually be working in conjunction with them for technology. There's no way. We are the only people in this universe. I am a 110% alien believer. Roswell, I believe that happened There are aliens locked in some vault underground somewhere in the desert, guaranteed, okay? And I was actually kind of bummed because we did not get an alien story to to, to go with this podcast, but that's okay. You know, you can't can't have everything. But, um, you know, we, we did get some ghosty things and some squatchy things and some unexplained things. So let's roll right into the mystery here with Hookshots fan Phil Croteen. Okay, he was one of the people that submitted through our Facebook page, and uh, I liked the story, and then what put it over the top was he sent me some some kind of creepy photographic evidence, uh, and we actually have two stories here that include photographic evidence, and I am going to post them on our Facebook page in the comment section underneath uh, this podcast when I post it, so you can actually go look, Okay. So, let's kick it over to Phil and the gibberish ghost of the mountainside. Hello. Yo, Phil. Joe Cermelli. What's going on, Joe? Not much, man. How are you? I am doing well today. I am doing very well. Thanks for asking. How's everything going on your end? Uh, Good. Here I sit in front of a computer, you know, which is what I do most days people don't realize, but... uh, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good, man. It's all good. So listen, hey, congratulations, right, on being one of the fan stories that's making our Halloween spooktacular. Um, I, I got to tell you, you sent, I was like on the fence, and then you sent me photographic evidence of the paranormalness, and that put you right over the top. Yeah, dude, it was, it was creepy. I'm not going to lie. Like, it was. <laughs> like I don't feel like I should this even is... believe myself without the pictures. Right, right. Well, I so I've been asking everybody this. So first of all, let's just so everybody knows, where do you hail hail from, Phil? Where where am I? Where are you right now? I live in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, and and this story happened whilst trout fishing. Where in Ohio? No, actually in Southwest Pennsylvania. Southwest Pennsylvania. Okay, okay. Yeah, so about three and a half hours from home. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so to get back to my question that I'm asking everybody, uh, prior to this, I mean, do, do you believe in this shit? Do you believe in ghosts and, and, and spirits and things? I mean, you know. You know, I really hadn't up until that point. It was kind of like a fluke thing that I kind of, you know, I would say 
I would kind of joke about it, but it would never be like something I would take 100% serious until now, I guess. <laughs> right, right. So how long ago did this happen, Phil? So this was, this happened three years ago, I want to say. Okay. 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 All right, man. So, so take us back to that day. And this was broad daylight, right? This wasn't at night, was it? Yeah, no, this wasn't, this was middle of the day. I mean, we had, we had fished uh, a river down there that has smallmouth in it. Um, and then okay. me and a couple of buddies went up and fished a trib, which holds trout, um, while those guys were fishing for bass. So we start walking, whatever we get up to where it like starts to cascade coming down from, from the headwaters. And we were right. sitting there, you know, smoked a cigarette, whatever, hanging out. And all of a sudden, I heard what sounded like a couple Russian kids, like, talking over my shoulder. I kind of turned around <laughs> and looked at it and, you know, didn't really say anything. And my buddy, one of my buddies, I'm, who I'm going to remain nameless, um, yeah, says to me, hey, did you hear that? And I said, you know, kind of brushed it off. And I'm like, yeah, it was probably just the water, though, you know, echoes, something like right, that. Right, sure. You know, because water makes funny noises. We all know it. Wait a minute. Hold on for a sec. Because in, in in your message on Facebook, you said it sounded like somebody talking gibberish, and that just became it sounded like a couple of Russian kids t- talking. Yeah, you know when you can when you can <laughs> barely you know when you can barely hear something, and I don't yeah. speak Russian. You know, I speak one language right. and one one language only. Um, it sounds like Russian gibberish over my shoulder. Wow, you know? that's creepy, man. Like, how close to you? How clearly could you hear it? I mean, it was. It wasn't. It was. It wasn't like it was right in my ear, and I could hear it word for word. You know, it sounded okay. like it was maybe over the ridge a little bit. Um, you okay. know, just out of okay. earshot, to where you kind of wanted to follow it. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So we get done with our break, whatever. We start heading up, and one of our buddies kind of he fishes a lot faster than we do. Um, sure. So he starts just trucking up, whatever, and we get up maybe. A mile. So at this point, we're about four miles from the parking area. And right, so you're in pretty deep. Like this is not like right on the road. Like you guys are no, out there. No, no, this is not close to anything. We're, I mean, the two. We're in the middle of a holler, and I mean, it's 450 feet up on either side. You know, it's there's no way anybody's getting in there unless they're coming in the way we came in, which isn't an easy hike either. Um, right. Sure. So he heads up. And all of a sudden, we hear, this time it's much more pronounced, you know, that Russian gibberish, you know, where it okay. sounds like yeah. they're saying something, but not really saying anything, you know? Um, okay. And I'm like, all right, this is weird, dude. I'm like, do you hear that? And he goes, yeah, that time I definitely heard it. You know, we both hear it. Let's find him and let's, you know, kind of start getting our way back. Because at this, at this time, it's about 4.35 o'clock. Um, right. What's, what time of year is this, Phil? It's, it was, um, I want, I want to say it was like October 12th of okay, 2015. So it was the fall. Yeah. Okay. Fall. Okay. Cause we always do a trip around the same time. I mean, they've all got right. kids. I'm one of the only right. ones without kids. So. Right. Right. Yeah, so you, you and your buddy. Yeah. Yeah. I hear. Oh, I know. I did, yeah. <laughs> That's a whole other podcast we'll do one day. Um, but so okay so you and your buddy hear it again and your other buddy is uh on the trail ahead of you not with you right correct and so okay. we start hauling up to find him to just kind of say hey let's get on out of here and we come through like we kind of have to push our way through you know some overgrown limbs or whatever and yeah, yeah. all of a sudden he i see him coming back towards us and i'm like what's the matter you run out of fish to catch and he goes no dude what were you guys saying to me and I'm like, Ooh. I'm like, I, we didn't say anything, but we did just hear something talking to us. And he goes, yeah, man, I, it just got real spooky up there. I kind of just want to head back. I'm like, cool. You know, we caught a ton of fish. Let's just start heading back. So we start heading back and it comes to, there's a big wide spot where it opens up and there's kind of like a floodplain, I guess you would call it. If a small stream can have a floodplain. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> And I kind of noticed like a game trail and I start walking along because path of least resistance and I'm lazy. Um, so I start walking along and all of a sudden it comes to like, it looked like there had been a flood there, except, you know, it wasn't a flood. Um, we noticed that one picture that I sent you of the tree that was kind of just like bent over and twisted. 
Yeah, yeah, just like, yeah, real close to the ground, just like, yeah, twisted over as if, like, something had come through and just knocked it. Exactly. You know, and I've seen deer rubs and everything like that. I've seen deer break trees off, you know, little saplings and stuff like that. But I've never seen anything like that. And there were about four or five of them. Well, we start looking around because we obviously want to see if we can see anything else to try and pair up, you know, corroborate all of our stories. Yeah, yeah. And that's when we notice the two small sets of footprints. Okay, now this is where shit gets weird because you sent me these pictures, which I will I will post in the comment section when I post this podcast for the people listening. So these are very clearly defined, like little kid bare footprints. Like it wasn't a shoe, right? Like I could see every toe. Like these were like bare feet, right? Correct, correct. You can see every toe, and I mean I've got a big hand. I wear an extra large glove. Um, and those, those footprints, one of them wasn't even as big as my hand, you know, and this isn't, like I said, this isn't an area where you can easily get to, you know, you have to cross three or four times and right, right. I mean, that time of year, I mean, it's colder, it's October. Yep. You're really far from the car. You're really dug in. So like what little kid is going to be that deep in that time of year making like perfectly, defined little kid footprints dude that's that's creepy shit phil exactly. like, that creeped me out i saw the picture what did i write to you i was like oh my god creepy little kid <laughs> footprints you're in <laughs> yeah i mean it was definitely it, it was definitely interesting you know and it, it, kind of, it really scared me too because it's one of those things like like you said you are literally in the middle of freaking nowhere you know cell phones don't work nothing works you're out there with a map trying to find a good fishing spot, you know, and this isn't like a spot that gets a ton of traffic either. Cause I was trying to justify sure. it as, you know, a ton of traffic is going to come through here. And you got it. You're the only footprints up that far. You know, you're going to see footprints right. for maybe the first half mile. People turn around at the hiking trail and then they're done, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, man. So did you ever, have you fished there again? We have fished there a few other times and I actually sent another buddy up there. Um, I, I was going to address that. Like, that's <laughs> like, that's all good for you, man. That's like the classic asshole shit. Like oh, just yeah. send your buddy up there and don't say anything about that. <laughs> yeah. I purposely didn't either. Cause I, I wanted to see if he, you know, had anything happen to him. And so I fished up about that first half mile with him and turned back and said, Hey man, you're going to go up all the way to the cascades. There's going to be fish all the way up. You're going to do real good. You know, kind of played it off as like, there's nothing weird going to happen here. Right, right. So we started heading back to Cleveland. As soon as we got service again, which was about an hour later, he texted me and said, dude, that spot's weird. And I immediately called him and I said, hey, what do you mean that spot's weird? And he said, man, there were rocks flying over my head. It was Oh, no way. Yeah, he said he had one rock thrown over his head there. Overall, it's a really creepy spot. I mean, it's there's it's just been abandoned. You know, it's all new new growth type stuff, so it's not sure. You can't really see ahead of you. It's super dense. You know, it's definitely a creepy, creepy spot. Well, dude, yeah, this was this was definitely one of the creepier ones. You know, it's the it's the gibberish thing, man. Like. <laughs> Yeah, it's one thing to feel something or like hear something undefined, but when you said like it sounded like somebody like talking gibberish to you guys out there, I mean that's you know that's like straight up exorcist stuff. Yeah, man, and I've looked at I've looked at the map to try and figure out the only thing that goes past there is a road, and we were about two miles away from the road. You know, right, right. So it's, have you ever have you ever looked into any history of that area, like to to see like if you know. There's any other legends that correspond to that? So I have looked, I have looked quite a bit, you know, into logging history, coal history, um, oil history, because those are the big things down there. And there haven't been any deaths or anything in the area. But what I did come across was on um, the Bigfoot Field Research Organization website. I did find uh, reports in that area. You know, uh, most really? of them. Yeah, most of them date back between, I want to say, the 50s and 70s. Um, you know, just old word-of-mouth type type sightings, you know, because obviously right. back in the 50s and 70s, 50s and 70s, they didn't have 
the internet, you know, but it's kind of those sure. word of mouth type reports that exist out there for that area. Wow, man. So that could go ghosty or, or squatchy now. That's like a whole other level. Yeah. It's, Maybe they were, yeah, <laughs> infant. Do you believe, do you believe in Sasquatch? Cause oh, that yeah. one I absolutely, yeah, do you, my, do you really? I, I totally do, man. We've heard some weird stuff out there cause we camp times a year when nobody else camps. We do some dumb stuff that nobody else does. And we've had way too much weird stuff. We've heard way too much weird stuff, you know? Well, I hear you, man. Hey, dude, you got you to you keep it weird every once in a while. but <laughs> Exactly. Hey, I love keeping it weird. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> kind of interesting, was it not? How that went from a ghost story to a squat story. Okay, uh, and and since we, we've kind of trailed off on a squat story there with Phil, it feels only natural to roll into our other squat story from Hookshots fan Dave Edwards, who uh, is better known on the Facebooks as Dave Fish for Days, and I consider Dave actually a buddy of ours. You know, we fish with Dave a little bit. And, uh, Dave's a good guy, Jersey boy. Okay, He's in sort of North Central Jersey, and uh, he hit me up and said. Dude, I got a squat story for you, and to this day, uh, I just still can't quite get my head around it, and it was me and two friends, so there are multiple witnesses. I was not the only one that saw this, and, uh, you know, despite my, my thinking that if there is a Bigfoot, uh, he's not in the most heavily populated state in the Union, Dave is going gonna, is gonna to tell us otherwise. So this one's for you, all the people who wrote in and said, well, you know, I've, I've been hooted at in the woods. I've had some, some rocks thrown at me, okay? Uh, the difference between a Jersey Squatch and a real wilderness Squatch is that Jersey Squatches throw D batteries, bro. Hello. Hey, is this Dave Edwards, better known as Dave Fish for Days? It might be. Depends who this is. <laughs> you know who it is, son. What's going on, man? What's going on, brother? Nothing. How are you? Oh, good. You know, same old shit, different day. You catching anything? You fishing? Uh, trying to. Uh, my body hasn't really been cooperating. I was supposed to go last night. Fell asleep. Didn't happen. Ah, oh, man. What, down to the beach? Yeah. yeah I was going to go out front, see if I can find old seven lines swimming around somewhere ah uh, well you know can't catch him on the couch but you can rest up so you can talk about spooky shit with me so i guess i win yeah i guess it's a plus for you <laughs> not so much for me so <laughs> all right so this is a this is an intriguing one master dave because uh -huh. a okay i do not believe in sasquatch i don't believe in sasquatch <laughs> i believe in a lot of other things but that's not one of them and if there is a Sasquatch and I am wrong, no f***ing way he's in New Jersey. Okay? <laughs> there are too many people here and roads and very little open land because that's what we do here. It's like, oh, look at that nice open land. Let's figure out a way to get rid of that. Yet you're going you're gonna to swear that you saw him here. A hundred percent, dude. And you have witnesses. You were not yes. alone. No. No, I was not. Okay, but you were, I mean, you, but you, you were, gotta, but you were trespassing. At at a certain point, yes. <laughs> Which I, I I don't condone, I guess, but yes. <laughs> you know how it goes. Sometimes you gotta get a little dirty to do what you gotta do. Well, I was thinking that maybe the reason you saw uh, uh, Bigfoot where you were trespassing was because maybe that's like a a Bigfoot sanctuary that only the government knows about. <laughs> I mean, it's possible. But, I highly doubt it, I though. Know, I know, but we don't want people to pass judgment too early. So take us back. This was a while ago, was it not? Um, Yeah, I want to say it was about 10 years ago now, give or take. It okay. could have been like 8. It could have been like 11. Okay. I don't know, somewhere in that area. But it was so powerful, it's just never become unburned from your mind, has it? No, no, I could still <laughs> see, see the day clear as I could that day. Okay, so go ahead. Where were you? Um, so we're here, central New Jersey. Me, my buddy Flan, and this other guy, Scott, we're all kind of sitting around bullshitting, and we want to go fishing. And 
it was probably mid late July, like dog days of summer, hundred okay. percent humidity. You know, it's hot as balls out. Okay. Water temperature's hot. Um, so we're thinking where, the, what the hell are we going to do? It's midday. You know, we're, we're, we're all too busy worried about partying back then. We didn't care about I waking up to go fishing. I understand. You know? I hear you. I feel you. You know how it goes. <laughs> I used to. So, well, you used to, but <laughs> we all get old. I don't even know how it goes anymore, bro. <laughs> so we finally come up with the plan where we know about this little spring fed pond, lake, whatever the hell you want to call it off in the middle of the woods up on this little mountain preserve kind of thing that we have here. Okay. Is this Northwest Jersey by any chance? Um, I don't know. You know where I am. It's like central. Yeah, I guess it's Northwestern. I call it central Jersey. Okay. No, cause I do just want to clarify to people. Like I joked that like you, like we're a crowded state, like the most crowded in the union, but you, people would be shocked at how much nothingness you can actually find here. If you know where to look and like the Northwest corner of the state Swear to God, right? May as well be Vermont. So, like, yeah, I'm just that's why I'm curious as to where you are. But you were. I mean, I mean, I'm not. I'm not Northwest State like Sussex County or anything. I like gotcha. I'm, I'm, I'm right here in Somerset County. Right, I'm like right. smack dab in the middle of the state. Okay. But you're not and, you quite know, in downtown of, Newark either. So no, no, I'm far, <laughs> far, far from uh, Ironbound. Bro. Okay, okay. Um, so we decide we're going to the Spring Fed Lake. We know that the water temperature usually runs five degrees colder there for whatever reason, right. I guess, because it's spring fed. Right. And it just so happens that in order to get to this spring fed lake, you have to walk about 45 minutes up this natural gas pipeline that's cut into the middle of the mountain. Okay. And then veer off to get where you're going. Okay. Now, it just so happens that this lake is privately owned by a local hunting and fishing club, which will go unnamed because... You don't want to get arrested. I, although yeah, the statute yeah, of limitations you know, and is probably... I, I don't want to give anybody the wrong idea on where they should end up. Right, okay. <laughs> so we we all gather up. We get in the car. We start heading up the mountain. And you get to this point where you got to go down like this little sketchy gravel road. Okay. And you're you're lucky if you can fit two Honda Civics down it if somebody else is coming the other way. Gotcha. You know, and we're in like, I don't know, an Explorer at the time. So it's like, all right, let's get the f*** up this road, park, right. and be right. out of the way. So we're going up the road, and you come up to the pipeline, and you got to park right on the side of the pipeline. Just as we're getting out of the truck, it starts to drizzle. You know, we all kind of look at each other like, nah, we don't have rain gear. I don't know. We just said, screw it. We already drove all the way up here. Let's just go fishing and make the best of it. Right. So sure. we got... We get all our stuff together and we start our walk and it's an uphill walk for, you know, three quarters of the way. So we're walking, shooting the shit and we crest over the first hill and immediately all three of us stop dead in our tracks. Like conversation ends at whatever point it was at. We all just stop and nobody says a word for what seemed like forever, but realistically it was probably quick. Right. Um, and we look up to, you can see the crest of the next hill. And right in the middle of the pipeline is what I claim to be Bigfoot. Um, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, th the only other reasonable thing that I could think it would be is that Shaquille O'Neal got himself a big Bigfoot co costume, <laughs> found himself in the middle of central New Jersey in 100% humidity, 95 degrees raining, and just so happened to be waiting for us to walk up this mountain. Okay, so let's let's that, bre let's break it apart piece by piece. So, given the conditions, I would have to agree that hoax is very unlikely. Like, what are the odds? Although, I have seen like some some pretty weird shit in in uh, in North Jersey. But the, uh, be that as it may, so y describe this. So Shaquille O'Neal, that dude's like eight feet tall, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can clearly say that what we saw was definitely something taller than we were. The The pipeline has, like, a trail that goes right up the middle of it. Okay. And then off of each side is, like, high grass and weeds and all overgrowth and stuff yeah. before it hits tree line on each side. Yeah. And that high grass is roughly, I want to say, conservatively speaking, four feet tall. Right. So like that above line, your waist where you're walking then, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's 
right right at my man boobs, you know what I mean, as I'm walking through. <laughs> okay. So so from what we can see, this, this stuff looks to be like the same height as whatever the hell we're looking at's waist. Wow. Okay. So we can tell that, I mean, it's definitely tall. You know, and I've never seen a brown bear in New Jersey. I don't know about you. You frequent the area no, a lot. No, no brown bears, although – Black bears, as you know, they can be yes. like all different colors, right? Cinnamon or whatever. Uh, yes. But, dude, tell me, I mean, what did this thing look like and how long did it stand there? Like, give me the play by play. I mean, it, it stood there. It, it's hard to judge how long it stood there because it felt like we were sitting there frozen in time for, you know, what seemed like 15 minutes, but it definitely was not 15 minutes. I mean, it, it was probably a 30 second event the whole thing was it looking at but, you like did it stop yeah you so you yeah, scared like, it too yeah like we we but what we both startled each other we were both kind of like deadlocked at each other like what the hell are we looking at and it's like oh shit like what the hell is this wow and did, i mean was it an ape dude like what did it look like i mean it, it was hairy it was brown it was tall i mean it and it walked the on face two was legs. Hairy. When it, it walked, walked on two legs because after after that stare down, this thing just kind of bolted off to our left, which would be its right. Okay. Into the wood line and disappeared. And like when you say bolted, you mean like bolted, like just yeah, like I'm gone. I'm out. Interesting. And then okay, so what did you guys do next? Did you, did you like? Did you go after so, it? Did you knock on a tree it, or throw a rock well, or hoot or something? Well, it, it just so happens that where this f***er was standing, we have to walk past to get where we're going anyway. Right. So we all kind of said, well, let me, let me bounce back a second there. When, when, we, when that thing finally left, we all kind of looked at each other, and we all kind of didn't have an explanation at first. Okay. You know, Fl- Flan looks at me and goes, dude, what the f***? was that and scott scott was pretty much silent he, he didn't know what i don't know if he shit his pants and he wasn't sure like what he should do about it like i don't know what he was doing but flay goes what the fuck was that and i was like dude was fucking bigfoot and flay goes I, he, he just kind of stutters he's like i i don't really have a good explanation in terms of what that was i've never seen right. some shit like that before yeah. he's also you know, named after a mexican dessert so you know which he has never tried, by the way. I'll throw that in there. He, he, has, he has never tried it. it, it we, we have discussed it many times, and the opportunity has never arisen yet. Okay. Sorry. I had to. Go ahead. <laughs> I was kind of expecting it, to be honest. Um, so we all start walking that way, and when we get to the top of the next hill where it was standing, we can see, You, we look to our left, and you could see where it went in, and you know, anybody that spends enough time in the outdoors can see when brush and things were recently moved, you know, from something stepping on it or going through, right. whatever it may be. And from, I would say, the center of the path where we were to the tree line where we lost sight of it is probably a good 20 to 30 feet-ish. And, and, and go ahead. There were there were literally four imprints along that 30 feet of where it looked like he just took two, three strides and was gone. I mean, dude, this is so as that's... classic, like, a Bigfoot scenario as I've ever heard. Almost to the point, Dave, where it's, like, so perfect, I believe it less. But I don't disbelieve you. I mean, like, were there, like, legit I mean, footprints? Like, so there was physical evidence there. I mean, the, there weren't, there weren't like, legit footprints because it's all, it's all just pushed down tall grass by the right, time it right. was going through it. You know, right. he's not... He's not hitting the dirt or anything enough for I can go get a thing of plaster of Paris, pour it in there, and be like, ha, yeah, look at this, yeah. mother. <laughs> I got it. You know, it, it wasn't to that point, but you can see exactly where it went through and just how big its strides were and how much length it covered in such that short period of time. Did you go after and, it or did you keep fishing? No, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> we, wanted, we wanted nothing to do with that. And we kept going. <laughs> so uh, we, we walked right past it. We said, screw this. Hopefully it went way the f*** over there, and we're going over here. And we ended up getting to the lake, which, you know, we were getting largemouth bass. And what what's actually really special about this place is it's got huge dinner plate bluegill, like right. pushing state records. Right, like right. We're, we're throwing f***ing DT5 crankbaits, and we're catching bass and bluegill. So... You know, it's it's a mixed bag, but we we get there, 
and we're, we're fishing. We fished the whole time. We fished maybe like two hours, but the whole time that we were there, all of us kept turning around and looking over our shoulders. Like anytime there would be the littlest, you know, twig break behind us, you would see all three of us just flip right around, like screw fishing. What the hell is behind us? So you didn't have any and rocks thrown at you or anything like that? No, nothing like that. My one buddy's grandfather, or no, his father, his father, I'm sorry, not his grandfather, he claims about 40 years ago within 10-mile radius of where I claimed to have saw Bigfoot, he was trout fishing a stream, and Bigfoot did throw rocks at him. Have you looked into that area? I'm sure there's websites that, like, log Bigfoot sightings in I have, every actually. State. Yeah, and? I have, and I don't think I really turned up anything. I think I saw, like, one mention of it somewhere in a forum somewhere, but I don't remember the exact mention. Well, it's a great story, man, and I do believe you, but can you not at least agree with me that if there was a f***ing Bigfoot in New Jersey, some New Yorker would have run over it on the turnpike by now? (laughs) I mean, I, I do agree with that, but, I mean, when you look at the place in New Jersey where I'm at, there is so much preserved farmland and you know i've got the mountain preserve right here so there is a lot of a lot of space around my area that has been pretty much blacklisted from construction like you cannot build on it it has to be left completely alone well come on finding bigfoot people can you imagine them hooking up with you the amount of bleeps they'd have to put in that episode oh it'd be insane you know me i like my uh, sentence enhancers <laughs> I'm from Jersey. What do you expect? I always feel somebody's watching me. So there you go. Crazy Dave Edwards keeping it squatchy in the Garden State. Okay. Uh, side note to that story here's why I just can't get my head around squatches in Jersey. Uh, because he said this was on land that belonged to a hunting club. Okay, you know how most guys hunt deer in New Jersey during shotgun week? Okay, they get 40 dudes to walk through a stand of woods and and drive bucks and does to the 40 other guys waiting on the other side and they take them down in a hail of gunfire. I've been there. I've done that. Okay, and come on now. Come on. You're going to kick out a squatch as fast as you are a buck during buck week in New Jersey, okay? And he would just be riddled with double O. But anyway, I'll give it to Dave. So let's move on from squatches to ghosts. And we're going to go over to my man EK, over to Curbs, for uh, the first of of three legit uh, ghost stories, we'll say, to close this out. And interestingly, Curbs is the most compelling, okay? Curbs has the most physical contact evidence going on. And the cool thing about this story is it's a total, it's a straight up M. Night Shyamalan deal. It's got a twist, man. You're going to get to the end and be like, oh, I just got M. Night Shyamalan. Okay. M. Night's going to call Curbs up after he hears this and do a movie called Curbs. That's how good of a twist there is on this one. Sitting here with Curbs. Hi, Curbs. What's up, JC? Not much, man. So, question for you, because I think you are probably the least skeptical of all the guests on this podcast. Before we tell your your tale, which is a good one, do you do you believe in ghosts and the paranormal? I do. Yeah, I do. I do believe in ghosts. I do believe there is some sort of spirit situation that could happen. I do believe in uh, the coldness on the hair and the back of your legs standing up stuff. Yes, I've I've witnessed it. I've seen many ghosts. The back of your legs standing up, that's pretty extreme shit. I've seen a lot of ghosts. I have. I've seen them. <laughs> Not necessarily when fishing, but I've seen a lot of ghosts. All right. So, but this is a fish ghost. This It's a fish, yeah. yeah. A fisherman ghost. Yeah. So to to set this up so we can get right into it, uh, if for anybody who doesn't know, Kerber spends his winters in the Florida Keys chartering, 
And the first year you went down there, your good buddy, Billy Chapman, right, mm, captain yes. down there, he brought you down. Brought me down to work the deck as mate for him, yes. Right, on the Captain Cadillac. It was the Captain Cadillac at the time, owned by Randy Kaiser of Kaiser Cadillac. Okay, so Randy owned this boat, and the deal was you got to live on the boat. So you didn't have to have an apartment or anything. You lived on this boat. I was on that boat for three months, and that's where I slept. That's where I crapped. That's where I cooked <laughs> tile fish in a pan. Yes. Not the easiest place to crap either. I know that. It's tight <laughs> quarters It is big, <laughs> for, yeah. uh, for after, large Americans. After a month, it gets kind of tight. Okay. So now that everybody understands the scene, that's all you need to know. Those are the players. Randy, Curbs, and Billy, Curbs living on a boat in Florida, go for it. Okay, so that was the first year I was down there. I worked with Billy, and Randy was still the owner. Um, during the summertime of after my first year of being down there working for Billy, uh, Randy had suddenly passed away. Right. Um, God rest his soul. He was... He, he said he was a good dude. He was an awesome man, yeah. and I am absolutely honored that i got to meet him and fish with him and hang out with him and get to know him like i did um he was an amazing dude uh nicest probably one of the nicest guys i've ever met in my life right. most generous guys i've ever met um and boy could he drink <laughs> like <laughs> most of them keys boys can though the, the yeah he was from new york but yes oh, okay. when they came okay. down to the keys i mean it was it was a party right like not right. much sleep and party and uh you know billy would tell me about some of the stories of the parties and i'm like come on man right. and like and really you know and then the first time i met randy and his buddy tom that would come with him down all the time to fish uh i i, I couldn't even fathom right like, i couldn't even fathom the amount of alcohol that they would drink so right and um, and, and billy was very tight with randy yes. I mean, he'd known him for a lot more years than you did yes yeah oh yeah billy knew him for i probably 10 15 years i guess gotcha very very tight gotcha. very tight okay. um and uh yeah randy was just a cool dude man he was a real good guy he was the boat owner you know and uh he made things happen down there more or less for you know billy and myself and just just a really good dude so he was there the first year that i got to go down there in between the se first and second year at the summertime is when randy um passed away from you know some complications it was a, it was a quick thing like he went into the hospital right um for st some stress stuff and came out and went right back in and and right it happened like sure. it was very quick and not you know something we knew was happening so it was it's pretty upsetting for you know a lot of people and everybody everybody down there and sure it sucks it really does um but that's where the story begins and my second year down there, um, it was kind of like up in the air what was going to happen with the boat and the charter business and all that for a few months um, because, you know, Randy's family, they liked going to the Keys and stuff like that, but they weren't fishermen. They weren't fisherwomen. They right, were, you right. Know, um, it was Randy's – that was Randy's baby. Right. So she didn't – the wife, she didn't really, uh, you know, want the boat. Like, she wasn't, you know, the kids weren't like, oh, we need to keep the boat. Like, so it was really up in the air what was going to happen with the boat, the 35 Lures, which was the Captain Cadillac. Um, two of the guys who used to fish, who used to charter the boat a lot, ended up, you know, hearing what happened, and they bought the boat. Right. Okay. Um, two great guys named Mike and Carl, very good friends of mine. They own an awesome business, and... uh they bought the boat out to right. keep things going. Right. You know what I mean? Like they right. wanted to keep it going. So they saw the opportunity to get in on the business and, and bought it and, and kept it going. Um, so the second year I went down, Mike and Carl were the new owners. Billy was still running the boat. I was still working in deck um, and the whole deal. And when I got down there, you know, start, moved myself in on the boat and – uh just living on a boat like I do in the winter all the time. And uh, just weird things would, you know, start happening. Um, the most notable thing was in all the salon area and the bedrooms and the bathrooms and all the, the little lights that are recessed into yeah. the ceiling of yeah. everything, okay, have little covers on them. You know, like so you can unscrew them and take it off to change the light bulb, you know, like – and they're probably about maybe 
four inch, maybe three to four inches in diameter across. They're not like real big. Like with one hand, you can reach up and unscrew it. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. But you have to unscrew it. Right. It's in like, there tight. Yeah, yeah. Like if you hit, they're made. So if you are in six foot seas, they don't come off. Right. Like it's, they're made to not come off unless you really need to take it off. Right. Okay. And uh, I'd wake up in the morning and like one would be on the floor. Right. You know? Right. In the bedroom. And it was like, hmm, weird. Nothing. Never thought nothing of it. You know, just screw it back on, put right. it up there. Like, okay. You know, and then two days later, you know, one in the salon would be on the floor or up by the couch. It was like, what the heck's wrong with these things? Something's going wrong with these, you know, yeah. screw, you know, like the, they're losing their, they're losing their screw ability. They're right. not hanging on anymore. <laughs> you know? So like that was happening and it probably happened for a good month. You know what I mean? Like my first month being after rain pest. And I never thought nothing of that. Like right. I never thought nothing of that till one night I'm lying in bed and just listening to the waves slap on the side of the hall like always like, all right, cool. Yeah, we hopefully we're going tomorrow with this wind, right. you know. And then uh, there's a like a like a car stereo head unit down in the bedroom yeah. that works, you know, the DVD player for the little TV and radio yeah. for the boat, yeah. like stereo for the boat. 2.30 in the morning, comes on. Full blast, playing music. <laughs> Scares the living shit out of me, okay? And I'm like, what the So, get up, shut it off. That was weird. Still, like, never really thought anything of it, right, you know? Like, right. it wasn't hitting me, like, why does this stuff happen? But, like, never thought nothing of it. So, turned it off, went back to bed. Two nights later, same thing. I don't think I don't I wasn't like keeping a logbook, but I don't think it was like the same time. Right. You know, like it could have been on a timer or something like that. But right. it, it was definitely like random radio would just come on. Right. You know, right. right. Um, the lights, little light covers were still popping off. Like, you know, um, one time when I started wondering about the light covers is when I watched one pop off. You know what I mean? Right. Like it didn't just fall off. It was like, ping, like when <laughs> went shooting off, you know, at the dock. This is at the dock, like right. not in rough seas. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Sitting at the dock. Yeah. And uh, it was just, it was crazy, you know, like never thought nothing about it. It was probably about two months in to my second year there. And uh, one of the owner guys, Mike, Mike Krug was there. You met Mike. Mike's yep. good. Mike's good. Yep. Guy. I've met Mike. Um, and uh, me, him, and Billy were just sitting on the back of the boat. We had the door open to the salon. It was a real nice night out, you know. Um, and we would just drink beers, hanging out like we always do, getting, you know, talking about what the plan would be for the next day, what we were going to fish for, where we were going to go. And um, over the sink, like, if I could try and describe how the boat is, you walk in the door into the salon area. You got a little leather couch off to the to the right side, okay? There's a little table and there's like a kind of an L-shaped L couch on the other side. Right. Okay. Right. Then if you walk straight in, you would go down the steps into a bedroom, a little room off to the side, bathroom and shower off to the right. Right. Okay. Um, there's a little stove top, a fridge, you know, a counter and a sink right up top there. And there's cabinets, like kitchen cabinets yeah. above yeah. You know, the sink and the, the stove area where, you know, there's... Random stuff, you know, cups, liquor, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> seasonings for food, you know, yeah. stuff. And then the one cabinet had all kinds of paperwork, you know, charter paperwork, Coast Guard paperwork, right? HMS permits, all the the crap that you need, right? On a charter boat, paperwork wise, okay. Uh, pens, which seem to disappear a lot out of there somehow. <laughs> um, just that was where the stationary kind of stuff was. Was in that top cabinet. Well, me and Billy and Mike are sitting on the back of the boat that one night, and these these cabinets they latch. Like, think about it. you're on a boat, right? A everything fisher. has to latch. Everything so has it to swing latch open. so it doesn't right. swing open right. in six foot seas. Okay, so we're just sitting there, and one of the doors to that top the cabinet with all the stationery and paperwork in it just flings open, right? Like flings open, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I'm sitting there, and I watched it fling open, and it was like. Mike was kind of like, what the hell is that? Yeah. And Billy just walked in, shut it. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. No big deal. 10 minutes or so goes by. Boom. Thing flings open again. <laughs> and it was like, 
what the? Like, yeah. And at that point, even Mike was like, the hell's going on with that latch? What do we need to replace that latch? It's another thing we got to buy for this book. Right. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. You know? And and I just, like, I'm just thinking, like, man, that's so freaking weird. Like, this stuff never happened last year. Like, you know, lights didn't come off, radios didn't come on. Like, just weird, weird stuff. Right. And um, never really thought about it until one day we're literally out fishing. Right. Like, we were out deep dropping for tile fish, just getting some food. It was, it was me, Billy, and uh, it was old Doc Bennett. Right. God rest his soul, too. Yeah. Awesome yeah. dude. Legend. Um, Key's legend. Yes. Who I got to meet, too. Was so lucky. Um, who was also very tight with Randy. You know? Yeah. Um, and uh, we're just out fishing. Me and Doc were in the, in, in the cockpit working the electric reels, putting meat in the box, you know. And uh, Billy comes walking down. And he says, maybe this could be a good time to, you know, spread Randy's ashes. This is what he loved doing. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Like, totally taken back, right? right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like, out of the blue, nowhere. Like, what? All right. I didn't know, you know, you, you even had, you know. Right. Randy's. Come to find out, you know. Billy walks inside, and Randy's ashes were in that cabinet. And they'd been there for a while. And they'd been there for a long time. Because <laughs> um, Randy loved that boat, you know? Like, that was where he should have been after, you know. Yeah. And yeah, I had no idea. I had no idea that they were on there the whole right. time. Like, the whole time, you know? And uh, right away, uh, right away, yeah. I'm like, duh. Like, yeah. holy <laughs> crap, man. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah. And Billy's like, what? I'm like, dude, this explains it all. Like, this totally explains it all. The lights popping off, the radio going on, like, all this crazy shit that's been happening the last yeah. month and a half, two months. Like, Billy it all knew makes it. sense now. Billy knew it. Yeah. But you know what? It was so cool, dude. Yeah, I hear like, you. I hear you. Uh, I'm getting like chills a- right now <laughs> thinking about it again, but, like, it was so cool. Like, because that was, it was totally Randy being like, I'm still here. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can't sleep curves. I'm turning the radio <laughs> on, bro. And then like, you told me once you guys dumped the ashes, none of that ever happened again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. It it came to an end. Like it did. Totally came to an end. And uh <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> it's a crazy it's a crazy story. It did, it's a great story, albeit like a little bit more Casper the friendly ghost kind of story. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um I mean, you can't argue with physical things like that happening that often. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't creepy. You know, it's not the scary, creepy ghost story. But uh, just that's what I have, you know, with fishing related. That's my ghost story. All right. And uh, it's pretty freaking cool, man. (laughs) What? It's a good one. It's a good one. Well, happy Halloween, Curbs. Happy Halloween. Can't wait. Need some candy in the house. Pretty (laughs) scarce right now. Six foot, seven foot, eight foot, bunch. See what I'm saying? Like the outcome of the curb story is like, oh man, that's kind of nice. You know what I mean? Like it's the it's the it's the friendly prankster ghost of Randy. But at the same time, that was a lot of stuff that happened over a long period of time, and the fact that it stopped after they put Randy's ashes in the ocean is just like. Phew. Mind blower. Am I right? So we'll go from Randy, the friendly Isla Mirada ghost, to uh, the wet willy ghost of Velasquez, New York. No bullshit. Not making this up. We're actually going to kick it over to our dear friend, uh, Mike Sudol, who has never been on our podcast before, but we fish with Mike a lot, and you've seen his work. Mike is the artist, the incredible fish artist that drew uh, our hook shots artwork, our trout and uh, mouse stickers. Uh, he's, he's he's drawn a lot of grand prizes for the Badge of Honor program. Just all around good guy. Works for the Wall Street Journal, and he was part of our group that would go steelhead fishing in Pulaski every year, years ago. And the crazy thing about this story is that I was there when this happened, and only recently found out that it happened. Yet looking back on the day. I remember Mike being kind of quiet, and I never knew why. So, turns out the reason why is because of the freaking wet willy goes to Pulaski. Yo. Mike Sudol, what's going on, dude? What's happening, pal? Nothing, man. I I know you're at work, so we'll try not to keep you long. You said uh, 
you're in a soundproof room right now that the reporters at the Wall Street Journal use? <laughs> yeah, I am. I am, man. It's technically my lunch break, so, you know. Did you get a quick- oh, dude, did you... Did, did you get some street meat or something in New York and like bring it in there with you? You stinking up the place with oh, like, yeah, uh, tzatziki yeah. sauce and, and street, <laughs> street meat. The mystery meat. It's all cooked the same, so you never know. Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, I'm gonna try not to keep you long, but uh, we've got <laughs> dude, we got to we got to tell this story. Um, uh, yeah, okay. because right. we have to tell this story because I just learned this story recently, and the funny thing about this story <laughs> is I was there. <laughs> When this story happened, and yes. you never said a word until the idea of this podcast came up, and it was actually Mike here that sparked the idea for this because I'm like, oh shit, like I need to get a whole bunch of these stories. But <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, man, I can't, I can't even believe I'm telling the story because this is one of those things that happened to me, and I didn't talk. You know, I think I told it once around a campfire with a bunch of like non-fishing friends. Right. We were telling ghost stories. And, you know, and I, I, I don't even believe in ghosts. I don't believe in anything like that. I just, something did something to me. I don't know what the hell happened. I just know that it was, you know, it was a little uh, fishy, basically. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, and that's the important thing to establish. Like, you are like the adamant non-believer in this crap, right? <laughs> yeah, we, we fit, I mean, how often do we fish at night? We, we're, we're out at night all the time. Yeah, like, yeah, you're a hardcore surf feel, guy. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I mean, other than like stepping on, the only thing that scares me is stepping on the occasional skunk or something, you know, because that's like (laughs) real life terror there. Otherwise, you could pick me up and pluck me in Kansas right now and tell me, walk down that trail. There's, you know, there's fish down. I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. Let's go. Okay. All right. So, so Mike does not believe in ghosts. And this, this was years ago uh, on, uh, in fact, I just talked about this in the last podcast on one of our group, our group trips to Pulaski, New York, to steelhead fish. And uh, it was you and me and a bunch of other guys in October. That's right. It was was crazy crowded. So in order to get a decent spot, or at least try to, we would walk in in pitch dark in the morning, well before the sun came up. So I I will let you take the story from the hair. Because I was there. (laughs) Dude, like I was there when this happened. And... Thinking back on this, you were really quiet that whole day, and I never thought anything of it. So go ahead, dude. Go, do it. Do it. Yeah, so, you know, we we, we're, we get into this area that we're going to fish, and we're all gearing up. And the way, as as you know, and you've talked about for the way the way the Salmon River works is you do whatever it is possible to get to your spot as early as possible, because if not, there's going to be 30 guys hanging out there. Right. And uh, we we gear up. And we're leaving our, our trucks to walk into this long, this long trail. I forget how long it was, probably like a, a 15, 20 minute hike into the river. And, um, you know, everybody gets split up because you're just trying to get as many bodies as possible to where you need to be to yeah. hold the area. Yeah. And like so, some, you know, we, some guys are like rigged up before the others. They're still talking. Oh, so yeah. we all just kind of yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 it's setting up on the sand is no time for chit chat, right? You're right. out. You get your right. boots on, you're, you're running for it. Um, so anyway, yeah, we got split up. You guys are a little bit ahead of me, right? And um, uh, other part of our group's behind me, or with me anyway. I, 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 anyway, I gear up and I just start walking. And, uh, you know, I know you guys are probably like, you're pretty far ahead of me. Like, I would have to yell to get your attention. Right. Um, but, you know, we're, we're hoofing it through the woods. I got my little red headlamp on. And I'm staring at the ground in front of me, so I don't because I've never been on this trail before. I don't want to step on anything. So, so, and, so uh, clear. It's me and one guy on the trail, way ahead of you. You by yeah. yourself, and the other guys bringing up the rear. But they nobody was in eye shot of you. So you're essentially walking yeah. alone, right? I am, but I didn't know that. That's what's kind of crazy. So I figured. I, I mean, you know, we we I'm just walking, man. I'm thinking there. I'm I'm thinking two guys are with us, are right behind me the whole time, and we're just pushing ahead. And, uh, you know, I'm staring at the ground, you know, and feeling anticipation, or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, suddenly something goes <sighs> like a really hard blow in my ear. So immediately I'm thinking it's, it's one of the clowns we're with screwing with me, you know? So right. I, I, I laugh, I laugh, I laugh and I say out loud, okay, all right, calm down. I'm the f- down. Like, it's, you know, you guys think you're, you're funny. <laughs> and, you know, within a couple seconds, it went, 
really hard and long, like it, to the point where it blew my hair and like it kind of almost like it hurt my ear. Right. And I, I turned around. And I was like, all right, idiots. And those I looked and nobody's around me. Oh. Those guys, <laughs> those guys are further from me than I am to you. So they're like, I could barely hear them. I could see them all the way down the trail with their lights on, barely hear them. So I switched my headlamp, my headlamp to my burner, you know, my bright, my bright light. And I do a 360 around me and it's just nothing, right? There, there, there's no branches. There's no like stick that could have been like, you know, twitching my ear or anything like that. There's nothing around me. And I do that. It just, it freaked me out, man. I, I had, I had goosebumps. I was, you know, trying to say, what the hell was that? You know, and nothing else happened. That was it. Nothing else happened. And, and, we got into the river. We, yeah, and it was it wasn't it wasn't windy or anything that morning either. Right? Wasn't windy, dead silent, no wind, no rain. Um, in fact, I think it, if I remember correctly, I remember the conditions pretty much exact. It was like it started out cold and cloudy, and then just got it got sunny that day. There was nothing out of the ordinary with the weather whatsoever. Um, nobody around me, and that was the only thing that said that ever happened that trip. But man. It messed me up. I don't think I don't remember if I caught a fish the first. I think I may have later in the afternoon, <laughs> after you know, I, I don't know. I, I I know I didn't catch anything all morning. I was all, I was messed up all morning up from it. You know, just to, and not even like oh shit, is there a ghost out here? I was just more like I got the heebie-jeebies. I'm like, what the hell? And you know, because you're just constantly racking my brain. I'm like, well, was it a tree branch? No, it wasn't those guys. It wasn't what would have done that. And I got no answers to this day. And I still, I, when I think about it, it kind of creeps me out a little bit, man. Well, so, you know? so, so, I mean, I mean, this was just the sensation of somebody blowing directly into your ear as if like they were like, their face was right over your shoulder. The sensation, the sound, and it wasn't even sensation. Like it was air that blew against my face, you know, like it blew my hair, you know? So like. It'd be like if I'm, st- if, if you and I are walking into our surf spot and I go <sighs> in your ear and start, and you start laughing and be like, okay, you know, it's, it's exactly what it was. It's like I got wet willied by a ghost or something, you know? <laughs> I was going to say, dude, I'll do a Google search for the wet willy ghost of Pulaski, New York. So I, I mean, you know, it, it's, it, you know, it's, it's funny because it's not even that scary of an, of a place, but I mean, for all I know, it could be some kind of elaborate, uh, technology that some fishermen's doing to try to keep people from going into his spots or something, I, you know? I, I doubt that. I doubt that. And for anybody who fishes up there, this was on the Douglaston Salmon Run, which is the pay-per-day yeah. private stretch yeah, yeah. down down at the bottom. And, dude, to me, because I'm not really a believer either, like what makes this no. what makes this believable, first of all, is that I know you wouldn't make this up because you don't believe in this stuff yeah. either. But no, if you, if you think about it, if you do believe in ghosts and stuff like that, like you, there's a million people around, right? Because it's October, so there's already a ton of guys on the river. There's people yeah. walking around. There's a lot of activity. It's not like you were alone on some mountainside. So you, dude, like were essentially yeah. targeted. Like if you assume this was a ghost, it like waited for the one lone guy in the perfect <laughs> scenario because I I walked right wherever this happened with our friend yeah. Gary Edwards, at not probably not two minutes before you did, but I mean yep. we were together and we were you know shooting the shit and yucking it up, and uh-huh. the guys behind us were with a group and talking and everybody on the river is talking, but you were the one guy like with his head down by yourself in the perfect scenario between <laughs> us. So, like, you were, like, the, you were, essentially, you were, like, the perfect guy for a ghost to f*** with. I was a total setup. I was a total <laughs> setup. And it worked. And it worked. You know, it, I don't know what I'm more mad about. Something crazy happened like that. I didn't catch any fish for the first half of the day, you know, but, but dude, man. I, I looked up, like, just for kicks, I looked up, like, you know, ghost stories in, in Pulaski. And there's yeah. re- there's really not much. Like, there's a lot of haunted attractions and things up in that part of New York. Okay. But other than like I don't know, there's something about the uh, the lighthouse at the mouth of the Salmon River, which would be not uh. not too far from where we were. But um, you know, no nothing about like the wet willy ghost or anything like that. Man, so- <laughs> man, you know, I, I I went over every. I was like, you know, 
we got plenty of sleep that night, yeah. you know, like we weren't out part, you know, not that we were partying, we're fishing anyway, but we're not partying. We right. weren't, you know, we had, ate a good, healthy McDonald's breakfast, you know, like all these little <laughs> things. And I'm like, there's nothing that equates blowing in my ear from some supernatural force. Oh, you man. Know? So do you, uh, do you, do you believe now? Honestly, <laughs> like, do you believe now? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I thought about that, right? Like, I even thought, well, because we haven't, we haven't obviously, oh, actually, no, we did. We walked into that spot again the whole time we were there, and, I, you know, I felt the creeps, but it didn't bother me. Uh, I, I don't. I still don't think I believe, which I don't know if that's setting myself up for something else or yeah, what. Yeah, dude, like, somebody's going to go full-on f***ing Amityville horror on your house now. Right? And I, I, got, I apologize no for that, answer. because I made you say publicly you don't believe in ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> you, sh- oh, you should, you should, you dude, like you express yourself through art. Like you should draw that. Like, did you draw that one in your in your notebook? Like, you know, ghost blowing. Yeah, in your... I, I, I swear to God, I think in, in the uh, in my fishing log, there's a slight mention of like I did the whole trip, and then there was like, oh yeah, and you know, something weird happened that morning. Like I wouldn't even write it down because I was like so freaked out about it. You need. I was like. Someday, someday somebody's going to find or not find these or if they're, you know, I don't know what happens. They get published or something. There's going to be all these, like, cool tactics and then a very random ghost story wrapped into this, you know, I don't know. The wet, the wet <laughs> willy ghost of the Salmon River, man. You heard it here. The wet willy ghost. That's right. And, uh, you know, <laughs> watch out. Wear some earmuffs if you walk through there. Earmuffs, kids, so saith Mike Sudol when you're walking around looking for steel in Pulaski, New York. And I believe that one because Mike is a non-believer and it's not one of those things that's like a maybe. You know what I mean? Like that's pretty that's pretty physical. Getting the old French tickler in the ear, in the pitch dark, on the trail to Douglaston, salmon run. Okay? Earmuffs. So I guess some could say we've uh, saved the best for last, uh, or uh, last but never least, our dear friend Zach the Hammer Miller is going to regale us with a a tale of of ghosts in the Everglades of Florida, and this is this is some straight up Scooby Doo shit because this is like the uh, the the episode titled "The Haunted Airboat Camp," okay. So if you, I mean, if you've ever been to the Glades, there's, you know, the, the Glades are pretty damn remote, and the Glades are a little bit spooky at noon, you know, on a Saturday in the summer when you're out there because they're just so vast, and there is a lot of mystery and pirate lore and American Indian lore tied to the Florida Everglades. Now, Zach is going to to spin multiple yarns within the one story here, multiple ghost occurrences at the haunted airboat camp, but one of them comes with some photographic evidence, which, again, to reiterate, I've posted in the comments on the Hookshots Facebook page uh, underneath the link for this podcast, and um, it's it's pretty compelling, even for the non-believer. I'm not going to say what it is right now. I will let that be part of the uh, of the story here. So here we go. Zach the Hammer Miller, seminal Indian ghosts, as only Zach the Hammer Miller could tell it. So believe it or not, the one and only Zach Hammer Miller is sitting here in the state of New Jersey in my in laws beach house, gracing us with his presence to striper fish for a week. And what perfect timing, because you bragged on the Facebooks when I put up a post asking for spooky supernatural stories that you had dozens. I just want to first off say this is such a coincidence that I just happened to be here striper fishing <laughs> while we were getting ready. While you were getting ready to do this Halloween podcast. I, I know. Mean, in studio. This is absolutely <laughs> amazing. This is really an opportunity of a lifetime. I traveled very far. I traveled many miles to be here with you today. Yeah. And I mean, through all the obstacles I had to go through to get here, the, uh, I persevered. I further, I had to fight vicious tog in places that I never <laughs> would wish upon my worst enemy to be. And uh, fly, so, fly here on Spirit Airlines. Fly here on Spirit with a girl who was <laughs> shitting her pants two rows in front of me. 
<laughs> and they had to take her out with trash bags wrapped around her. It was really like the odds have been defied to get to this point with you right here in Hookshot South Studios in OC, Maryland. This is crazy. We're not in Maryland. We're not? No. <laughs> really? No. no we're wow. Not. Eric, did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one that the pen reel was based off of, or no? Ocean City Reels was based out of Ocean City, New Jersey. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought Maryland just ripped, Jersey just ripped it off from Maryland, just like everything else. Like, well, you know, no. good football teams like Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. We're having too good of a time. We're supposed to be somber and being scared. You are the... Uh... The king yeah. of the, 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 the Everglades you're taking us to here, right? I want to paint a picture for you. Okay, paint it. Okay. Bob Rossett. Uh, why you got to steal my lines before they come out of my <laughs> mouth? Don't look at me like that. I know this is a visual uh, audio medium, but it, it's, getting, it's getting spooky in here. It's very folly. I just saw some pumpkins roll down the street. Uh, there's a hay, local hayride. It's really amazing. And I'm starting to feel the Halloween itch and the ghost story urge right now this Good. is amazing because coming Good. from where i come from where we have shitty grass in our yards that could kill you our water could kill you uh salt water could kill you anything could kill you breathe the air in florida can kill you you can't do anything in florida and not possibly <laughs> die and that includes going to the everglades where all the seminal indian ghosts live <laughs> and that's where i want to kind of start our story right now let's go um you know i want to paint a brief picture for you this is going to be you know nice and to the point when where I grew up down in Southeast Florida, you know, before I was Mister Saltwater Guy, I was Freshwater Guy, kinda, right, right. A, a little bit. I did I did some fishing. I dabbled. The, I red, dabbled. Man, the red Man tour, a little bit Red Man. Uh, <laughs> that was more my cousin Bobby McMurray, but uh, I was there. We, you know, I was there with him all the way in support. But anyway, thank you. Sip a bush light to wet the whistle. I was going down on a coaster. I'm actually using a coaster because this I have that, beach house. that, I have right, that using much respect for the Hook Shots podcast studio. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> legendary grounds. But anyway, growing up down there in the Everglades, you know, it was a different time. This is 2005-ish, you know, around there, like right around graduation of high school. Now I'm dating myself, unfortunately. It's You're not dating thing. yourself as far back as me, so don't worry about no, it. No, that's sultry salt and pepper hair. <laughs> But anyway, a kid that I grew up with, you know, friends, they had an Everglades house. I know a lot of people are going to be like, what the f*** is an Everglades house? There was only 14 of them in this one government state managed swamp marsh area. Right. Imagine like redfish flats in South Carolina with some higher grass. And that's essentially what was out there. Right. Right. These homes were built on stilts. You could only reach them by an airboat or, in this case, a helicopter because his family had a helicopter and they built a wooden helipad on this camp in the middle of the fucking Everglades. Really? Rich boy, huh? Uh, Yeah, but they were... Listen, all seriousness, still some of my best friends. They yeah. were some of the coolest people I've ever <laughs> known to this day. No BS. That's true fucking story. But when we were in high school, we were degenerates and we partied our ass off at this place because when you're having parties out in the everglades on a still house ain't nobody coming anything, to break it up anything, anything <laughs> ain't goes. nobody it was the wild <laughs> west out there like and when you're sitting around and you're 16 17 years old and somebody tells you you got a stilt house with beer and food and water and you're like i'm fucking in man like that's part of being like real floridian and it was awesome. We spent many weeks out there. We rode uh, aftermaths of hurricanes out there because it had a generator to power the place. Mm -hmm. And it was just a wild scene. I mean, we were doing all kinds of illegal shit out there with wildlife. It was f***ed up, man. And well, you're admitting that on a field and stream run. I podcast. didn't admit what I did or who did it. I mean, I could, this is storytelling. This is theater of the mind. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, none of that happened, of course. Wink. But... There was some weird shit that would happen out there. Like, I've, I'm a firm believer in the paranormal. I never was until I saw something. And the first thing that I ever saw or experienced was out in that quadrant of town. And, like, I've had probably eight or nine things that have happened to me over the years that I can't explain. Right. But the majority of them, at least, like, 
six of them have all come in this same swath of Everglades region for some okay. odd okay. unknown reason. There's some bad juju out there. Okay. Um, his camp that was on stilts was nicer than everybody else's. It was like three sections of houses that were on a dock, like a pier, and there was an overhang that connected them, so you could like walk between them and you know not get wet if you wanted to. And most of the other ones out there were made out of two by fours and sticks. Like yeah. they were shitholes yeah. compared to yeah. this place. The, yeah. the locals called it the Taj Mahal. <laughs> That's a true story. And. Um, we would go out there and just party and party and party and, and fish and hunt and do whatever, duck hunt, gator hunt, a lot of that shit. And one night we were out there. This was the first thing that happened to us at the actual camp itself. Like, we had stuff happen in other parts of the area, but this happened at the camp. And we were out there one night, and it was like there was eight dudes out there. It was a total sausage fest i don't know how it matriculated <laughs> to that it sucked but we were we had a good time man and we're out there and i used to love to just scare the shit out of people especially new people who had never been to the camp because, of course yeah because if you go out there and like you shut the lights off you can't see anything yeah. it's just pitch black and yeah. you're in wide open marsh it was a really kind of a wild scene no matter how modern and nice his place was and I started, we started drinking and I was shit talking and I'm like, you'd never see a Seminole Indian ghost if it came right through that f***ing sliding glass door. And I kept going and going and going until everybody, you know, it's like 11 at night, everybody got real spooked. So everybody had to go walk around the camp with fire pokers and shit to do like a sweep of the area, <laughs> make sure no ghost, Seminole ghost were going to pop out. And me and my buddy Meat Hook, who used to scare everybody, you know, we were, we were all about it, like whatever. And... We go back into the living room after that. Like I said, there's three sections of the camp. One is the living room and kitchen. Then there's the bunkhouse. And then way in the back, there's a generator and a bathroom. So there's three, like, hut squares that are all connected. And in the living room, there's a fireplace. This is at the very far end of the camp. There's a fireplace with a bass mount on the wall. It's a, They're on a stringer and a piece of wood. It's like 20 skin-mounted bass. And that's the dead end of the entire camp is that far side. And there's like a three foot wide walkway that goes around, you know, the building so you could get around the camp. But this is the very far end of it facing west into darkness of the swamp. And this is all relevant because here's where we're going with it. We're all inside playing some stupid drinking game we made up. And there's eight of us. And I mean, we are toasted. Right. Like totally right. toasted. And it's around one. Two in the morning at this point, and everybody closed all the blinds after their ghost sweep because everybody got really spooked. And like, oh, we just don't want to look out there and think about it. Because if you let your mind get to you, it will eventually uh, get to of you. Of course. It will. And we're sitting inside, and somebody did something in this drinking game. And we were screaming at the top of our lungs, all eight of us at the same time, like, oh, like, like something like that. And it, like, not just light screen. We were screaming like you could probably hear us f***ing shaking this place outside. Right, right, and right. In the middle of us yelling about whatever happened, I thought I heard a noise. And like I said, I'm blitzed. Everybody's blitzed. But I, in just a split second in the middle of all eight of us screaming, I stopped. I just stopped. And I'm like, man, did I just hear something thinking in my head? And we're in a circle around this big square table playing this game. And then somebody across from me stopped and somebody else stopped and somebody else stopped and like it, it it got to the point where it went from a hundred decibels to eight of us looking at each other it just this it was like something out of a movie joe that's the only way yeah I yeah could describe it like it w was wasn't staged it was just everybody stopped and was staring at each other and uh, and i said to everybody i'm like did you guys hear that and as soon as i said that there, the only <laughs> this noise came r rumbling through the friggin' room, and the only way I could describe it is if like somebody had like a heavy steel table, like a kitchen table or a giant stainless steel fillet table, something yeah, heavy, yeah, 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 and was dragging it across concrete, and Ooh. it was just like, and mind you, we're in the middle of the. In Everglades yeah, at two no, in the morning, you nothing know? out there. There's nothing out there. Obviously, we don't have the blinds open, but we heard this noise three times consecutively at a few second interval, 
coming from behind the wall in the fireplace, and so much so that we could see the bass mount vibrating on the wall of the fucking like <laughs> I'm freaking out just even this is ten you know twelve years ago and. We're, you could see the the bass mount rattling, and being the chicken shits that we were, we all jumped up on this giant square table, and somebody had a broom, somebody had a fire poker, and we're all yelling, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? And, like, it stopped after maybe, like, 40 seconds, and it did it three or four times in that 40 seconds, and we're like, okay, we got to go outside. we got to go outside and see what's going on. Maybe the wind was blowing plastic, our lounge chairs across the right, deck, because right, right, that right. could have maybe did it. And we went out there, and there's no wind. It's just dead summer night, and it's just still. And we're like, oh, maybe it was an, uh, the, the gator that lives at the camp, because we had a pet gator that was like nine foot that lived there. We called him Chuck Mangione until some hillbillies <laughs> kid, kid came and killed it. And we used to do bad stuff with that. He'd lay on our stomach and tap his nose, and he'd open his mouth up. We'd throw a whole package of hamburger meat and shit down his throat. It, like, we were idiots, like full-blown Florida idiots. And... We got our fire pokers and brooms because we weren't allowed to have weapons out there because of some new stupid bullshit pussy law number six or something. It's a state. It's a state park law, I believe. Whatever, man. Okay, it's not America law. Continue. And George Washington would be pissed. But we walk around each end of the camp and come to the back of the square, and we had like two teams of four that went down each walkway to. Uh, assess the situation and see if we were going to club something to death, you know, a, a <laughs> skunk ape or something. And we walked around the back and there was just nothing there. And the whole s slew was still and just everything was just, there was just nothing. And like we spent dozens and dozens of nights out at that place before that. And after that, and that never happened again. And whatever it was, we could feel it in the floor and see it on that bass mount. It was coming from behind that wall, a hundred percent. And there was nothing there except three foot of walkway. So how to explain it? I don't know, but I'm just going to chalk it up as paranormal. I mean, I'm, I try to be skeptical about stuff, but there's nothing that I could tangibly think, you know, 12, 13 years later that I could think of that actually was doing that. Right. Right. And sidebar, I think we'll finish it off on this right Yeah, here. we got to talk about your picture. you got to talk about the picture. You guys are probably going to see this picture floating around. This is going to help your guys' visual, too, if you're looking at it, because this is a picture of the actual camp, the Airboat Everglades camp. Right. And you will see the three sections I am talking about, and far left side of the picture is the end wall that we heard that noise coming from behind. But flashback to the picture in question here. This is 2005, right before, you know, cell phone cameras really became a thing. I think the Razor phones just came out when I was graduating yeah, high school, yeah, and they yeah, had that yeah. shitty, you know, six-pixel camera. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it looked like you were taking pictures of bricks, and it looked like <laughs> Minecraft. I think that's the game all those loser kids play. <laughs> Minecraft? Is that it? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's Minecraft. It is now. But... We always used to say, you know, because used to, we still were using mostly um, disposable cameras in 2005. Right. It's only 2018. Look how f***ing far technology has come at this yeah. point. It's ridiculous yeah. if yeah. you think about it. But uh, we brought two of my friends out to the camp for a weekend, like a three-day weekend around Halloween. Because I remember it was the first, like, cool front we got, which is very rare. So you remember them when you get them. Yeah. And we went out there for like a three-day bender and just airboat ride and fish and do whatever. And um, one of them, my friend Joey, he brought a disposable camera. And we used to say, you know, no no cameras. What happens at camp stays at camp, yeah, like yeah, whatever, because yeah. yeah. it was a little wild, you know. And uh, we're out there, and he took pictures over the course of the two- or three-day weekend with this disposable camera while we were just getting blasted. And there was a lot of other crazy stories from that night, but... The, uh, you'd love to hear those off record, but the, um, we didn't think anything of it. You know, it's no big deal, whatever. And a couple months go by and Joey came up to me like at school or maybe it was right after we graduated or something. He's like, Hey, I got copies, uh, duplicates of those pictures. I went and got them developed. And I'm like, let me see. I mean, he shows me the pictures and I look through them. I'm like, Oh yeah, some of those are cool. You know, give me the duplicates and the negative or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Negatives. You kids listen, don't even probably know what a negative <laughs> is. That's pathetic. There's no negatives on on uh, Instagram. No, unfortunately there is not. There might be a filter there's for a, it. There's a negative filter. Yeah, of course yeah. there is. <laughs> yeah. And that's a negative in America, my America. But 
Anyway, I go to the kid's house who owned the camp. His family owned the camp, Keith. And um, we're sitting there one day just doing nothing at his house. And I'm like, oh, yeah, Joey gave me these duplicates of pictures and, like, whatever. And we're looking through them. And like, oh, that's kind of a cool shot, like, whatever. Uh, you'll never get to experience the mystery of if you got a picture good or not until you had film developed. That you're, was one of the right. greatest th- you feelings didn't know what ever. You, had. you didn't know what you had. You could have the best picture ever. It was like Christmas opening a thing of yeah. pictures. And unfortunately, I got, I got a whole box full of film of like fish with their heads cut off. Really? And sh- yeah, just like it's it's great. I it's know. great, and I miss <laughs> it. The Walgreens people, God rest their souls, over there in the photo department. <laughs> that's who. That's who's haunting the, shit right there. The ghost of Walgreens. <laughs> the ghost photo of developers. Walgreens photo <laughs> <laughs> Those poor people, man, just tumbleweeds and cobwebs in that. <laughs> but the uh, anyway, <laughs> we're looking through them, and we we looked through these pictures a couple of times, and we never saw anything that was like out of the ordinary. And I forgot who saw it, me or him or his sister or something like that. We, somebody took one nice picture of the entire camp, and like we never had that because this was as you were leaving, that's. What was going on? We were leaving. We, you could see, like, we're lower in the water in this picture, and it was clearly taken from the bow of the airboat because we're not on the dock. It's right. walk. We're going away, it seems like. And in the picture, it's gray skies. It's very fall, you know, Halloweenish skies. So you know what's around that time of year. And in the picture, in the right center... I would describe it. It's about right center of the picture. It is daylight. It, it yeah. It, it's definitely daylight. And this is on a negative. This is a hard copy of a photo. There's a door to one of the master bedrooms in the bunkhouse on the right side of the picture. And in the picture, there is clear as friggin' day a black shape of some human form. You can't see any arms. You can only see two legs, shoulders, and a head. And it's not like, oh, maybe that's a smudge. There is something tangibly standing in this picture. And if you have not seen the picture yet, you are listening to this podcast, get your huggies on. It's going to make you spell your bowels if you're a believer <laughs> in this stuff. Well, I see, I am not a believer in this stuff. And now I, I have looked at this picture. I Again, I will post this picture. And... There is no denying that shape in that photo, mm-hmm. and the skeptic in me is is like trying every way to figure out <laughs> what the hell that like that's some piece of the piling or something. But I'll give it to you, man. Like I told you, I had it's a freaky. photos. It's I had photos, and of course, I have photos. Like who else would come up with some shit like that? Nobody. Yeah, you never get surprised anymore. <laughs> this picture you're gonna see, it's really crazy, and the. What it looks like, it looks like its right knee is bent. Looks like it's stepping into the doorway, which is closed. There's no arm reaching out to open this door or anything. It is clearly right against the door. And, like, you could be like, okay, maybe that's a person. and You caught a crazy shadow or something in the middle of the day or whatever. But the thing that's really kind of mind-blowing about it, like, you guys all have been through a door at some point in your life, I would assume. <laughs> a doorknob is only maybe like mid-chest height. If you look at the door and where it is situated, even above the six-inch step going in there, that door is only at the shoulder height of this figure. The doorknob, I'm sorry. The doorknob is only about level with the shoulder leaning back or, or whatever this, whatever it is. And like... Can I explain it? No, I'm almost positive nobody was on the camp when that picture was taken, and I think the only reason we examined that photo better is because we never brought a camera out there to take a picture of the entire camp at that right, point. Right. So I think that's why we were looking at it. There's always pieces of the inside and stuff, but never like one nice shot of the whole camp. And dude, homie on the friggin' front of the boat with his stupid disposable $14 ripoff camera... Took that picture, and there is something clearly in front of that door. What it is, I cannot tell you. You could try to determine that for yourself. But yeah, over the years, I've had it examined by like legitimate ghost hunter people, and like to see if it was. Is a- there such a thing as a legitimate ghost hunter person? <laughs> there is. I mean, there's people who like go through like pictures and be like, okay, this has been doctored or like whatever. There are people who are in there to debunk shit. Did you find this person on Craigslist? Not this one. Okay, not this one. 
That's how I met Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you have it, boys and girls, ghosts, ghouls, and goblins. Thus concludes the uh, first, probably annual, because I had a good time doing this, um, Hook Shots podcast, Halloween Fishing Tales Spooktacular. We would, of course, love to hear your thoughts and comments, uh, what you buy, what you don't, maybe your thoughts on the photographic evidence that we've posted as an addendum to this podcast. And uh, yeah, you know, maybe it'll make you think a little bit more when you're out there in that fog, when you're out there late at night walking out of that trout stream or fishing on the surf, what lurks in the darkness. Anyway, hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this. We did have a lot of fun. I hope everybody has a safe and happy Halloween with the kitties. I love Halloween. I am very excited uh, my kid is going to be a donut this year, which is cool, and I am pumped about that. It beats the crap out of uh, a Disney princess, okay, because everybody does that. That's lame. Remember, check those whatchamacallits for razor blades. Uh, if anybody's giving out whatchamacallits or Rolos, they're probably suspect anyway. If anybody hands your kid a bag of veggie chips, egg the shit out of their house, and I will catch you guys right back here again in two weeks. Thanks, as always, for listening to the Hook Shots podcast.